We walk around with over a kilo of bacteria inside us, mostly in the colon. But we are created in a sterile environment. Here, inside the mother's womb, there are no bacteria. So where do we get our gut bacteria from? And how do they change over time? This maybe looks like some ordinary scientist in an ordinary lab, but oh no, in here is a unique innovation. Exciting! Soon we'll get acquainted with the artificial intestine that Frederick and Yasenko here have colonized with cultured bacteria. But how does this happen in reality? when we humans get our very first intestinal bacteria. Let's take a look. In children born vaginally, the very first bacteria come from the mother's vagina and anus. But breast milk, or a substitute similar to it, causes a new group of bacteria to grow, breast milk lovers. They get pushed aside little by little as solid food gets introduced and when the food becomes more adult-like, most of them disappear, in favor of bacteria that can break down fibers, for example. Only in adolescence are all of the important intestinal bacteria in place, and the intestinal microbiota is considered to be adult. But wait now, if someone is born by cesarean section then, and doesn't get contact with the mother's front and back sides, where did they get their gut bacteria from then? If you're born by C-section, you will have more of the bacteria from the environment instead, and such as from the skin or the hospital setting. But over time, these will be replaced by those that are adapted to the gut. There have been many associations between the gut microbiota in children that were born by C-section and diseases later in life, such as asthma. But I think it's still hard to prove that as a causality that those altered microbes really contribute to the disease or if it just happens in parallel. The difference in the intestines of cesarean section children becomes smaller and smaller with time. And by the age of three, it's so small that it doesn't matter. Then what changes happen in the gut bacteria of adults? Well, some people have a calmer bowel life while others change like a roller coaster over the years due to travel, new eating habits, or drugs, for example. And with the help of an artificial gut, we can understand why it is such a roller coaster sometimes. So this is our constora tarm. And then we have first one kärl that represents the stomach with a little sourer pH that you have in the stomach with milk saft. And then it comes in in the thin tarm. Then we have the thick tarm here. And this is where we have the most bacteria. It's a little grumbler, a little different color. Then we can either stop in bacteria here, or we can give them different food. Here we test, for example, how a strength works. It gives us the opportunity to study the impact of specific bacteria on the total ecosystem or how different food components can alter the function and composition of the ecosystem. Yes, what we eat affects our trillions of gut inhabitants, deciding who will thrive and who gets pushed aside. And research is in full swing to understand this changing life inside and how it affects our health. And using an artificial gut can reveal a lot. Probably the best gut in the world. I could feel it in my bones. 